You know you have a mosquito on your face? Really? Yeah. There you go. Done. Media reception of the project always started with look at these weirdos, look at this weird thing that they're doing, isn't that gross, or how does it work, blah blah blah. When they see the product, the reaction, the flavor, the experience, they have to address it in a different way. We don't give them any other option but to say wow. For the blooper reel, but that'll take Can you restart from define in few words the idea behind Robin Food? Robin Food is a non-profit organization dedicated to changing the situation of food waste in the most delicious and awesome and amazing and accessible way possible. We rescue fruits and vegetables that would otherwise go to waste from farms, markets, supermarkets, things that would be wasted for aesthetic reasons, cosmetic reasons, logistical reasons. And together with our very creative chef and our volunteers, we turn it all into delicious meals that change every day according to what we have. And every day people are welcome to come, eat, enjoy, experience, and to pay as they feel for the food and the experience. That way it is accessible to everyone and gives them a way to open a door to a conversation about food waste, about consumerism, about sustainability, in a way that uh, anyone can enjoy. A tasty meal. Food rescue can happen at any level. We go very often to the wholesale market of Haifa, which is basically the market of the markets, selling by boxes rather than by kilos. There you can see at the end of the day a lot of waste, things that are not held to the same aesthetic standard, new stock coming in, old stuff out, crooked vegetables that are just fine for eating. They're just as nutritious and just as delicious, and just things that they don't want to sort through, find what's good and what's bad. At the wholesale market, uh, a lot of people already know us. They know about our project in some very superficial way and they see us coming and they, you know we look like happy folk trying to do good. They give us things that they're going to throw out and they talk to us and say how are you doing and uh, there's some stuff over there. Some of them you know raise an eyebrow and don't really understand but uh, in general we have a positive uh, reaction from the sellers at the market. Tell me more about like when you actually go to rescue food, how much stuff do you bring back? I have larger than private car and we today we filled it up to the ceiling. I was squeezing things in, you know, I'm always doing Tetris with this kind of stuff. And uh, that happens on a daily basis. We got eggplants, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, cabbage, tomatoes, mandarins, more cabbage, tomatoes, uh, spring onion, yeah, parsley and uh, coriander. <laughs> I know all the vegetable names. <laughs> ah, we also have some uh, little, beautiful little radishes, herbs, cauliflower, more of these mini lemons, and probably more things that I don't even remember. We'll see when, when, when we unpack.
Yeah, everything in. Everything to the kitchen. Tal and the mesh and Gabriel can show you how to do the stuff. From our rescue food, sometimes we get uh, vegetables which, let's say, don't look normal. Okay, what does it mean? It means maybe that there is carrots with like two legs instead of, of just one beautiful carrot, you know? Or sometimes we get eggplants with a nose, okay? I don't know, sometimes we get sweet potatoes which are just enormous. So most of like normal people at home wouldn't buy it. First of all, because it's like too big for like personal consumption. And second of all, like it's not so aesthetic. The aesthetic standards for supermarkets are constantly rising. It's a kind of vicious cycle where they want to display the most perfect and beautiful and shiny and sexy produce that they can in order to also be different than the other supermarkets. And us in turn, only see this produce and expect a high standard. And so our standards are rising, and so in turn are the supermarkets. And if you ever go to a farm or grow a tree of food or anything else, you'll see that fruits and vegetables come in all shapes and sizes and colors and angles and anything you can imagine. And so uh, a lot of times the not perfect white broccoli or the carrot with three legs or the potato that looks like a butt, they will a lot of times not be used. And uh, we think that's a shame. And we collect this food, sort it several times at the place we uh, collect it, in the kitchen, when we use it, always with high standards. And then uh, the chef uses what we have in whatever way he decides. And luckily he's very creative. It's always like a challenge, a kind of reality show where the curtain goes up. We've got some of this, some of this, a lot of this. Let's make a plan. The first one, I'm the chef. I have experience in cooking. I was a chef for 40, 40, 15 years. I'm the chef for Robin Food, but I'm old enough to be, to have an experience of many things. Since I was, uh, I had graphic design studio and I was um, running my own restaurant. So I know a little bit about business and about people, but I wasn't aware about it, about food waste. For example, in my restaurant, I, I was, I was trying food without notice. For example, if there was a salad, I would take only the four or five best leaves and throw in the rest and not, not thinking what, what else can I do with the... It's not, it wasn't good for salad, so it, I couldn't use it for salad, but I could use it for something else and I didn't. Uh, I learned about it at the beginning of Robin Food about uh, the problem. I, I wasn't aware about it. I knew it, like everyone know, but it didn't touch me, I didn't uh, pay attention to it. Yeah, there is waste. Now I know the numbers, I, I, I see the result of it every day, the food they, they bring me. I see boxes of good quality vegetables. I say, wow, why did someone want to throw it? So most of the stuff, like we're getting, uh, we're getting like food in good conditions. Sometimes, obviously, we get stuff which, like, some parts are bad and some parts are good. So we have like this general routine in the kitchen of basically rescuing what we rescued. Meaning, we take like a eggplant, and if just this part of it is rotten. We just cut it off and this part is still good, you know? So like we will use 80%, which is a lot. And you know what I like a lot? I like sometimes when we get like 10 kilos of avocado. Uh, usually like in normal restaurants, you won't get as much. So you can make something in really big quantities, like a big pile of guacamole, which is great, you know? I love it. We have no limitations in terms of cooking. We can do whatever we feel like as long as it's vegan. So this is great, you know, most of the restaurant will only cook maybe 10, maximum 15 dishes all the time, all over again. 
and I think that we have like I would say more than 40 We tell people, pay as you feel. What does that mean? You pay according to how delicious the meal was, how much you value the experience, and how much you want to be generous and to support the project, to help it survive, but also to grow, thrive, and to create more and more change. We have many more dreams of what to do with this project, but the first step is that we get funded properly. We never give a number, no suggestions, nothing. They can decide, and from there, it's up to them. There's also a drink menu, which is pay as we feel. I always say, but we feel pretty good. And so uh, it's not rescued uh, materials, and we have uh, set prices for the beer on tap, for the coffee, and the other drinks. People can also decide to pay as they feel for the food according to their uh, ability and their time. They can just join the volunteer group with whatever skills and time they have. And there's a sign-up sheet here, and people sign up, and we meet them and figure out how to uh, make this work. The public that comes here, the demographics is very varied, which is a very special and unique thing. You don't really see it anywhere else because you can have uh, a lawyer, a student, and a homeless person all coming to eat, enjoy. Nobody is distinguished. Everybody's treated the same. You don't even look at what people are putting in the box. And that way, everybody feels included, even the people who have nowhere else to eat. They feel like they're at a restaurant. They're treated like everyone else. They order antipasti, they order a meal. And that way, uh, there's a large element of social inclusion here. Anyone can be part. Like the difference between good food and great food is a, th there is a gap there that I think I'm, I'm not quite there yet. Like I can make really good food, but sometimes when Kobe like comes and like cooks something just on its own, it can be amazing. You know, it can be just so precise and like the tastes are just like sharp and you know every bite you're like in heaven the difference between normal cook and a special cook or chef you have to have your own yourself you have to have a good taste you have to like good things it's not the cooking it's your taste and i, I particularly think that my taste is it's it's a good taste for most people if, if i like it most people would like it but the answer the real answer lay in another place totally I told you before, I was a graphic designer. And one of the basic things in graphic design is to use palette, color palette. We have basically three colors, uh, magenta, yellow, and uh, cyan. To be a, a good artist or maybe a good graphic designer, you have to have in your head the result of combining the, the colors. You have to know the basic rules about the three colors, and then you can make all colors in the world. Everything you make, not in, in, in accidentally, in purpose. You know, I want this color, and this color is 10% of this, 50% of that, and 60% of this. You have to know it. This is the same for me in cooking. The vegetables, the season, the, 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 everything. In my mind, I can see the picture before I cook. If I put some of this, and some of this, and a little bit of this, Oh, this could be good. I have to imagine it at the beginning. If I can do it, boom, it's good.
Well, I think the philosophy and what grabs people and what uh, brings them to this place and to enjoy it is the fact that we are not talking about a protest or talking abstractly. We're talking about something that's uh, very tangible, an experience that you know people enjoy anyway three times a day, a tasty meal. Food is the universal language, you could say. And uh, through that, people can not only say how tasty, how delicious, how awesome, but also how the hell is all this going to go to waste and how can we change it? And since a third of the food waste in Israel, at least and in most places in the world, is at the consumer level, we are able to uh, get them to have some, uh, a way to experience this and talk about this and perhaps take it into their own lives and possibly together with them create a public movement to be able to change the, the situation at the decision maker level. Workaway is the name of the platform which we use to uh, get volunteers from abroad. And our title is Rescue and Serve Delicious Food in Haifa, Israel. Something like this. And I think that tagline just grabs people like, whoa, that's cool. Not only is it doing something good for humanity, but it's delicious. And uh, once they read more, I think they, they say, wow, we want to come and be part of this. We have people who come from abroad, from all around the world, to help us out from between a week to a month or two months. They can help with the food rescue, whether it be at the wholesale market. They can uh, help in the kitchen with cutting, peeling, chopping, washing, and according to the chef's master plan to create these meals. They can help with waiting tables and explanation, which is a big part of what we do here. Every single person who sits down to eat is given a short explanation of what we do here, what the project is, how to order, how to pay, and make sure that the whole experience is uh, whole and fun. Ever since Robin Food started, we were always based on events. It's always been part of our mission, always part of the way we do things. Because again, we're about having fun and experiencing something that's uh, positive. And so everybody comes together through culture, through food. Every Thursday, there are cultural events, whether it be music, open mic nights, double feature performances, that anyone can pay as they feel for the performance, not just the food. And of course the Give Take Market, which has survived into this format, where every week anyone can come and bring things that they don't want, take things that they do want, uh, clothes, books, whatever. It's all part of the same thing. Well, if food waste, the phenomenon itself, was a country, it would be the third largest country in terms of carbon emissions. After the United States and China, it would be food waste. That's how big of a problem it is environmentally and as a, as a huge uh, proponent of climate change. I, either in the resources spent on creating the food and transporting it, cooling it, cooking it, serving it, and also on the other end of the very fact that you have a physical thing, a mountain of food being wasted on a colossal scale, which is mostly anaerobically digested and creates a lot of methane, which is an even more potent greenhouse gas than CO2. So there's something uh, to chew on. Our mission, the mission of Robin Food, it's, it's very small in, in, the, in the global world, but the main thing that we, we want to do is to educate. We cannot save the food. We cannot save all the food. In a period of day, when we go to the market and save what we can, it's less than 10%. We cannot save all the food, but we can educate people to show them how good the food could be, even if they wanted to throw it. This is the reason the restaurant has to produce a quality food, and we do it. We do it. So our role in in global way, it's only education. We have a lot of visions of how to develop this project, whether it be programs to uh, help reduce food waste in the home, in term, with tips, with uh, courses, with everything, ways to make um, companies and different industries waste less food, ways to turn food waste into different products like breads and uh, beers and jam, have this be part of the educational curriculum at all levels, to get parents involved, to get kids involved, to get higher education involved, uh, ways to change the way that people perceive dates on products, the way that they are decided. We want to have Robin Food branches all over the country, have product lines, have uh, you know 
media coverage, we have shows, cookbooks, we have a lot of ideas. Of course, the dream is to rescue all the food of the planet and all that. But a lot more than that is to prevent the waste in the first place. Uh, that's the real mission. We're not here to rescue the food, we're here to uh, create a change that will prevent it from being wasted in the first place. To bring on a sustainable revolution where people think differently about how they uh, consume, how they produce, and how they live their lives in a way that's sustainable and enjoyable. And so the spirit of it, of Robin Food, is enjoying what we already have and showing people that sustainability and using what we already have, if it's done correctly, in good taste, and creatively, not only is it not a sacrifice on a given uh, service or experience, it can be a serious upgrade. That's what we want to show people, to enjoy your life more sustainably. That's the spirit of Robin Food.